I have your attention, please? Good evening. You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy another exciting episode of our show. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark, now a part of the Level Radio Network. It's the six-man Dean Geronimo, and as always, from NJ to NC, I'm in the studio with my right-hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Well, you know, everything is just going on as we expected with all this stuff going on in the world. You know, we got mad people over there trying to say that they know what they're doing, and I have no faith in them knowing what they're doing because I just think that they are totally insane and don't really have a clue. But I am glad to see that some organizations and some people are stepping up to the cause and doing some great things. I saw that uh, the um, Chicken Hut, which is a local restaurant here in Durham, they were providing some food to uh, some of the school kids and things of that nature because they didn't want anybody to go hungry. And then I just saw recently today after a friend had told me about it that uh, both the counties of Durham and the counties of Wake, which is where Raleigh is at, have stepped up and are providing housing. I think through the month of uh, July, either the month of June or the month of July, for folks to stay in a hotel that are facing the whole situation of being homeless and things of that nature. Nice. So it's good okay. to see folks step up to the you know, up to the uh, plate and doing some real positive things. You know, we had Wendy Jacobs, who is a uh, member of the uh, county commission, as we did Brenda Howerton can't remember if we had any other members of the county commission on our show in the past, but it was definitely good seeing that they had stepped up to the plate and were providing this service for folks that, uh, you know, what's that old saying that they, uh, a lot of people that are religious talks about, which is that if uh, you're going to do something, you need to do it for the least of us or the least of thee or something like that, I believe is the quote that's in the uh, Bible. So it's just good to see that mm-hmm. we have people that are actually living up to that creed and actually trying to step up to the plate. So that's just a real positive thing that's happening here in this neck of the woods. You know, we are seeing constantly more cases all over the country and things of that nature. But, you know, we're going to, as you have said Mm -hmm. on the show a number of times, we're going to get through this. It's going to be, you know, a hard road and things of that nature. I did see that they are trying to bring testing up and things along those lines. So, we're going to find a way to get through it, but uh, in, the, in the meantime, we just have to struggle along and see how we're going to do uh, succeed on the day-to-day basis. Because, you know, a lot of folks are facing uh, unemployment and facing trying to get those unemployment checks, waiting to get those stimulus checks. I know I have not gotten mine yet. I don't know. Have you gotten yours yet, Dean? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Dean says he, he, he didn't get Yo, it last week, don't... and this week he still is waiting. Still waiting, bro. Like, they, I guess they said, no, nah, you're not going to get that, brother. <laughs> so they got us waiting on them. They got us waiting on them right. and just doing whatever we can to survive. I know a lot of folks are coming up with new hustles, new ways of surviving. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a uh, filmmaker and a film festival curator, and they were telling me that they're actually teaching classes. I but no, they said Zumba. I believe the other one, one was Pilates. So they're definitely trying to find new ways to come up with income because, you know, definitely if you have the incomes that are sliding down or you're sitting there trying to collect the unemployment or whatever else people are doing, in the meantime, you have to survive. You have to find ways to put some uh, money in your pocket in order to put some bread in the uh, cupboard and some uh, meat on the table. (laughs) Yeah, like, it's been tough for a lot of people and you know, they're talking about um, having another bill, I think I read earlier, and the thing said one proposal calls for every American age 16 or older making less than $130,000 a year to receive at least $2,000 a month for at least six months. I'm like, you know what? That'll be great. Married couples earning less than 260000 and get 4000 a month. And the payments will continue until unemployment returns to the levels they were before this pandemic came along. So I could use that money, man. Everybody could. 
I don't know anybody that would argue with getting that money in their pockets. If you find somebody that wants to argue with that in their pockets, I need to um, – there's a couple of uh, mental – facilities, I'm sure, in uh, New York, in New Jersey, and definitely in North Carolina that we can refer them to because most of the people I know that are sane definitely want to try to find some way to maintain their living and, you know, survive as best as they can until the economy gets back on a more even plane. Yeah, it's been tough for a whole lot of folks, man, folks not working and, you know, stuff like that. So it's been a crunch for everybody. No, no doubt about that. Uh, and folks are, like I said, trying to do some unique and novel ways to try to help folks out and everything. So, I, like I said, I was really glad when I saw that um, that place, the Chicken Hut, was doing their part to help out folks. And, like I said, the Down County folks doing their thing. So, you know, it's just good when you see people that are doing this. And the Chicken Hut is actually a locally based uh, restaurant that is definitely uh, – was founded by, you know, local folks and everything and not part of a big chain or anything of that nature. So when you see folks that are definitely making those kind of sacrifices, all you can do is just praise them for having that kind of uh, wherewithal to do those kind of things. So it's just good seeing folks that are doing these things. And, and it's not just them. I'm sure that there are some churches out there that are doing things. There are different people that are doing a variety of things to help folks in hard times. I know that the electric company, from what I understand, in many places has been waiving their fees, and I think the water department in places was doing that as well. So, you know, as you have stated a couple of times on the show before, the concern about that is that, you know, even though they're waiving the fees, the bills do manage to collect. So, like I said, hopefully that money will come through and that bill will pass right. so that everybody can pay those bills because we'd hate for them to have those fees waived and then, you know, come uh, September or October, look at their phone bill, I mean, uh, or look at any of their bills and be like, whoa, I owe 1500 I owe 2000 I owe whatever that astronomical amount is that would then put a serious dent in whatever their recovery plans were. Recovery plans and non-payment plans because you know, it's going to be kind of tough to get two grand out of somebody who couldn't pay it first. Yeah. You know what I mean? They couldn't pay it the first. Yeah, if they could pay it the first time, how are they going to pay it the second time? It's going to be real difficult to see whether they can pay it the second time or how that's going to all play out. Because if you couldn't pay it the first time, then you're in deep trouble if you're already, you know, collecting, like I said, unemployment. I understand that in some places the unemployment is a little bit more than what it usually would be. But even at that Let's be honest, Dean. Most of us are not that great at budgeting. I mean, we try to be and we try to do the best we can. But if I'm honest and I think about it, most of us find ways to not be the best budgeters in the world. I mean, if we're going to be honest about ourselves and just about people in general, we we are a social economy. I heard somebody say that on a um, Facebook uh, group that I was in talking to and everything and I agree with that person we are definitely social people most of us and most of us like to go out and do things like whether it's going to restaurants whether it's going to movies whether it's going to other things that are uh, not necessarily as we are now having to learn about essentials in life but at the same time we like to do them so that being said a lot of folks are going to have to cut back on those things whenever we get back to the new normal and I've been actually trying to figure out I know you're a big fan of uh football both the nfl variety as well as that um newer version that was out there playing before they stopped playing and everything and whether it's, yeah, that, whether it's basketball or whether it's whatever you got to wonder how are you going to have an audience of i mean what the average auditorium at a football field is probably in the tens if not hundreds of thousands and you're going to try to do six feet separation which means that a let's say an arena that holds Two hundred thousand is going to be down to like about forty thousand. So because you have to separate the people that way, that's just going to be. It's one. It's going to. It's not going to be a good optics on TV for one. And they know it's all about oh, TV all. ratings with sports. So you just got to wonder how that's going to play out whenever they come up to doing these things. And there has been talk about the fact that they needed to have these things happen. But I'm just trying to figure out how that's going to play out. It's not going to play out too well. you got to figure that's every three seats. So, you know, if I'm in seat one, the next person will be in seat four, and then yep. seat seven, seat ten, you know, uh, 
13, 16, all the way up, or going around in each row, that's going to be kind of ugly, man. Yeah, that's not even going to look pretty on the optics, like I said. Folks are going to be sitting there going, like, uh, what's going on here? And um, uh, it's over there in Jersey, uh, how active are the people doing with their mask and everything? Because I know that here I actually just went to the uh, corner store, and as soon as I walked up to the door, and I did not have mine, my aunt is sending me one that I'm hoping to get tomorrow. But uh, they were like, basically, they were like, we don't want you entering the store if you ain't got a mask on. Because I think that that's the new directive that uh, – our mayor is trying to put out very shortly and everything, definitely for grocery stores, pharmacies, and um, mass transit. But I think that there are some people like the convenience stores that are thinking that it applies to them as well because there was a big sign. First, there was a sign saying that they didn't want more than eight people in the, the store. I don't know if that was counting the people behind the counter, which would be two of them plus six, or whether it was the eight customers. I think it was the eight customers, but they were definitely saying that they did not want more than that in there. And then, like I said, the sign saying that they wanted people to be wearing masks. So are you seeing a lot of that kind of signage there in the New Jersey area, or are y'all just kind of like going as is? No, it's a law in New Jersey. You can't get service anywhere without a mask. So you could try to come in there without one. They have the right to refuse you service. In some places, they had uh, security standing at the door. So when people came in, tried to come in without a mask, he was like, no, no, go get your mask or go home. You know, so they're not playing around right now. It's, it's like just wear the damn mask. You know, some people want to be uh, renegade and they, they want to do what they want to do. But it's not helping them because they're going to get put out. In fact, they won't even get in. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to help them. And I know throughout the country, we've got people that are protesting because they're feeling that it's impacting their business and things of that nature. I know we've had a couple of folks even locally that have talked about um, that it's impacting them. So that's just going to be really interesting to see how that plays out, whether uh, folks will continue these protests. Because I'm sitting there going like, wait a minute, you more concerned about uh this business versus what this major pandemic that's going on and everything. And, you well, know, I heard a, I heard a person say a very deep thing and I could not argue with them. I can't remember whether it was on Shree show or somebody else's show that I was listening to. It might've been on the color of COVID and uh, things of that nature, but it's something that you've actually said in the past as well, which is that, you know, you can try to buck the system all you want to, but if you bust the system to the point that you kill yourself, well, you know, it's really all irrelevant at that point because you're no longer here. Right, you can't be a customer of anybody's when you're dead. Exactly. You know, but for those people, for those people that want to um, protest because they still want to do things as normal, have them sign waivers, man. Like, you know what? We're gonna keep this on file. So when you show up at the hospital coughing and wheezing, it's in a database. As soon as you put your information in, boom. Nope, you sign the waiver. Go home. You know what I mean? You refuse treatment should anything happen. So good luck. Wish you well. Hope you recover. But if you don't, that's your fault. Yep. Yeah, I see that speaking of what elected officials are doing, I just saw this article where some elected officials in the triangle are joining in an effort to support workers who won't be receiving coronavirus stimulus checks immigrants without legal status. Durham and Raleigh elected officials have joined a campaign by Latino advocacy group Simbra NC called the Share Your Check Challenge to pledge donating all or part of their federal assistance to economically impacted immigrant families. So the federal program gives 1,200 to individuals or 2,400 to married couples with an additional 500 for each qualifying dependent child under 17 by the end of 2019. Although many of them are working in essential jobs during the pandemic, Immigrants in the United States without a Social Security number are ineligible for the $2 trillion federal assistance aid package. In Durham, Mayor Steve Scholl and Council Members Mark Anthony Middleton, Charlie Reese, Jillian Johnson, and Javier Capoeira have joined the pledge along with Durham County Commissioner Chair Wendy Jacobs and Commissioner Heidi Carter. Hey, as a matter of fact, I think we've had all of those except for Heidi, and I've been talking to her about getting on, on the show. So you know, some of our friends have actually backed this pledge in terms of being uh, supporters of this show and everything. In Raleigh, City Council members Sage Martin and Nicole Stewart have joined 